Mr. Speaker, I rise today to celebrate the 75th anniversary of the Executive Order 9981, which desegregated the U.S. Armed Forces. It was in my home state of Alabama, or should I say our home state of Alabama, in 1941 that 1,000 brave black men trained at the great Tuskegee University to become the first black pilots in U.S. history. They challenged the status quo by showing white pilots and U.S. military leadership that they were more than qualified to defend the United States in, in a combat role. Segregation in the military finally ended on July 26, 1948, with President Truman's Executive Order 9981. But progress has been slow, Mr. Speaker. It took another 40 years before Colin Powell made history and became the first black chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Furthermore, it was just two years ago when Lloyd Austin was confirmed as the very first black secretary of defense in our nation's history. The battle to end discrimination in the military is one that we are still fighting today. Just this month, House Republicans voted to strip diversity equity and inclusion programs from the armed forces, undermining decades of strides toward racial equality. That is why yesterday I joined Congresswoman Marilyn Strickland in introducing a bill to finally codify non-discrimination in the military. As our service members risk their lives daily to protect our country, the least we can do is to protect them from discrimination. I'm immensely proud to honor the enormous contributions of the Tuskegee Airmen today. We must never forget the precious gift of freedom that is preserved because of their dedication and courage. I yield back the balance of my time.